So the next feature we'll have a look at in Revit 2024 starts on the Matin and Site ribbon tab. This is arguably the biggest feature of 2024. What we can see here is that the Topo Surface tool has been replaced by a Topo Solid tool. We have a drop down, so we can either create it from a sketch or from an imported file such as a CAD drawing. I'll click on the Create from Sketch option here. And looking at the Properties palette, we can see we have the Topo Solid object here. I'll click Edit Type, and it's very much like a floor. We can see the different layers that make up the object. And if I click to edit the structure, we can see the detail of those layers with their materials and thickness. We can also see that this layer here, the structure layer for the earth material, is set to be variable, so that as we add in points and build up the surface, it will be this layer here that will get thicker or thinner as we require it to. I'll cancel out of here. And now using the rectangle tool here, we can just come and sketch in an area for our topo solid. And then once we finish that off, we'll go to the 3D view and we can see the object here. Now, if I select it, we have the tools that we're used to seeing with floors and we can use these now to edit the topo solid. So by clicking add point, we get some extra interface here for adding the points. And we can either set a height relative to the surface here. So with a long surface selected, if I choose 500, and now when we start to add points in, that's raising that surface up by 500 mil each time. So we can just start to build those contours in. And we can obviously go back to the modify sub elements here and I can grab an edge and again we can just edit this as we would do by creating a floor and we can see that that surface starts to contour and we can see the thicker area of the earth underneath. If we go back to modify and select one of the points here we can see that its elevation is relative to the survey point just here and we can choose that to be the current level or any of the coordinate points that we use within Revit. So we can edit this and raise those points up. And we can obviously continue to add more points as we need them. And rather than set these to be relative to the surface, we can also specify an absolute level here. And again, that can be relative to the current level or any of the coordinates that we use in Revit. So if I set this to be 1600 and then start to add in the points, we can see that those are all being added in at that height. And the surface is getting thicker as we need it to. So I'll finish modifying that. And we can see now that we can start to get the contours displayed on the object. And if I select it, and click edit type once more. We can see that we have the contour display as part of the type properties. And we can edit this and we can see the dimensions of the contours here and we can insert, delete and adjust their values as we need. One of the new features of the topo solid is to be able to subdivide the surface. So with it selected, looking at the ribbon here, we have the subdivide tool. If I click on we actually then get the sketching tools. And now I'll swap back to the plan view. We've got some 2D line work that we can use to trace. So I'll use the pick lines tool. Now we can trace around those lines here, just as a 2D sketch. To show this, I'll swap back to the 3D view so we can see that sketch on the level just there. And now when I click to finish it, we can see that it actually follows the line of the surface here. And looking at the properties, we have a height of that subdivision here, so we can adjust that. And we also have the material, so we can click by category here and then launch the material browser. And we'll just quickly search for some paving material. So we can then apply that material and we can see that now changed on that surface. And if I select it here, we can 
hide the contours as well so that we don't see those across this part of the surface. And we can make multiple subdivisions here. So once again, I'll swap back to the plan view and then select the topo solid here and subdivide. And again, we'll just use the line work that we have here. Once again, swapping back to the 3D view, we can see that we've added that in. So, and again, we can adjust its height and also its material as well. So once again, we'll search for the pavers material and add that one in. And disable the contours. So we can see that we can now sketch and use this for creating things like paths and roads and hard landscaping. If we swap to the new textures shading mode here, again, we can see those textures being applied. We can also use these objects to host others as well. So for example, if I swap back to the plan and we go back to our architecture tab here and choose the railing tool, Again, we can use the pick lines and then select the lines. And then once we finish that off, we can then pick a new host and then select on the subdivision of the topo solid there. Once again, we can see that that's now following the line of the surface and of that subdivision. So we could use railings to represent landscaping objects such as fencing, but also things like curbs and bushes as well. Another big feature of the Topo Solid is the ability to cut into the solid using void objects. So to do this, I have another file prepared. And here we can see that we have a CAD drawing built in that has contours created in there. We'll use these to begin with to make the Topo Solid. So we'll go to the Massive Insight tab and click Create from Import, and then choose Create from CAD, and then just select the DWG. So this is very much like the topo surface previously, and we just need to choose the layers that we have inside the DWG for the contours. And we can see straight away that that's created the topo solid and used the contours to shape the surface of that. So I'll pick the DWG and we'll just delete that. And now if I pick on the solid and we'll click modify sub elements, we can see all of those points that were created by tracing the contours in the DWG file. We can also see now that it's given us a concave boundary as well. So instead of squaring off as the old topo surface used to do, it will actually follow the contours a lot closer. Now we have too much of the site here. So I'm going to go to the plan view for the site. And we'll, we'll cut the site out around about the scope box here. So to do this, we'll actually go to the modify ribbon tab and we'll just use the split element tool. And then we can select the actual topo solid, at which point we'll now be given the sketching tools and I can just draw a rectangle around about the scope box here. And then when we finish that, that will actually split that solid into two. We're getting a few warnings because we have some objects in here that are overlapping. But now in the 3D view, we can just select this object and delete it. And we're just left with the area of topography that we need. Now we can use several ways of actually cutting into this surface here. And one of those is to use an in-place mass. So if I go to the back to the massing and site tab here, I'll switch on the mass so that we can see it's visible. And this is now just an in place mass, so I can edit in place here. And we can see the objects and they are just created using the standard lines and create form tools that we're used to with the massing. These at the moment are both solid, so I'll select them both. And now in the properties, I'll change them to be a void object and now we can just use the cut geometry tool to cut the solid with the voids. So we'll do that once more with the second void here. And now I'll finish the mass. 
and we can see that that's cut down into the surface. And if I enable the section box on the view, we can then just use this to section through that cut. And we can see where it's cut through and down and underneath, which is going to give us some real scope to create basements and tunnels and even drainage. So if I now use the reveal hidden objects, we can see that we have some objects here that we've created around the basement. So we'll just unhide those. And we can see how now we can use floors with their shape editing to create ramps and also walls as well to create the actual structure that we need, even if it is an underground structure. As well as mass families, we can also use standard loadable families that have voids in them to cut away from the surface as well. So this means that we can create objects and just include a void object in there and use the cuts with voids option. And then when we place that in, we can place it over the surface and just use the cut geometry tool again and the void will then cut away from the surface. So I think this topo solid will be a real improvement to the landscape modeling within Revit, something that has been missing, and it will give us the ability to model underground structures properly, such as basements and tunnels. And overall, it's a real improvement to Revit 2024. So that completes our roundup of the core and architecture features of Revit 2024. And don't forget to look out for the videos that we have detailing the improvements to the structure and also the MEP disciplines.